You're watching TTV. I'm your host, Charlie Christmas, and this is the Big Small Business Show. This episode, you're all going to want to watch. I know you've been waiting for it. We are going to be talking about visas. Now, this is such a confusing subject um, here in Oman. You think that you finally understand what's happening, but no, suddenly it all changes. Well, here to help us understand more about visas is legal consultant Ralph Hijali. Thank you so much for Most joining welcome. us. You know how long I've waited to have you on the show. Likewise. So thank you for being thank here. You. Now, before we get started, Ralph, um, I'm sure all of the viewers are interested to know a little bit about your background, how you've come to be in Oman, and um, yeah, if you could just fill us in, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Um, I've been in Oman for the past 15 years. Um, I'm a, a legal consultant here in Oman. Um, I speak the language, Arabic, uh, English, French, Spanish. Um, I've been uh, doing... Uh, the legal consulting for major companies here in Oman okay. uh, for the past 15 years. Um, I've been also a legal consultant for private companies, uh, financial companies, banks, uh, basically um, big size companies, more than 100 employees. So uh, part of my work would be advisory for labor claims, labor uh, uh, issues. Yes. Uh, I believe this is our topic today, and it I would is. love to elaborate more and, and give more uh, shed lights on, on this. So, um, as I've spoken about on all of the episodes, the viewers know this, we touch on COVID in every episode just because it's had such a huge impact globally. Um, so, I know that there has been uh, obviously issues with employment as a result of that. People lost their jobs, companies um, obviously uh, unfortunately collapsed um, and that had a knock-on effect uh, into the labor and legal system. Um, so the first question I would ask you, and I'm sure the viewers uh, really need to know this um, and to understand it better, what are the new procedures regarding labor claims and complaints at the moment? I know things change quite often, but currently, um, where do we stand? Yeah. Um, as you said now that um, due to COVID situation, we had lots of problems and many companies had to shut down or to uh, claim bankruptcy. And due to that, many employees were found without any job and were discharged either uh, legally or not legally, this was a huge problem. But the, the biggest uh, uh, challenge was for the courts and the legal system, how to absorb this quantity yes. of claims uh, and how to deal with them and how to solve their issues, either by uh, trying to mitigate between the parties or to issue a verdict to resolve on the on the on the case uh, this was also due to covid we didn't have attendance to court hearings uh, in person oh physically oh my goodness yes yeah of so or to go to the ministry of labor physically yes. and attend there so we have like a disruption of the system uh, but uh, luckily also uh, the legislator found a new system to cope with those problems. And we had a new uh, law issued in 2021, 125 uh, number, uh, which made a simplification over the litigation procedures. Okay. And it had a particular uh, part where it will uh, give more details about the labor claims. So, uh, we had more simplified procedures for the legal claims where uh, the labor department is involved more in order to solve those, issue, those issues. So at the ministry, we have a first step where the employee can go there and try to solve his issue in a very fast manner. manner. Yeah. So 
the legislator tried to find a, a way, in a very practical way, very fast way, to solve those issues. First step through the ministry, and then through court. And if through court, we have also fast procedures. Okay. The leg legislator find a very advanced, ma advanced way and a very progressive way to cope with the new needs of the society. So, yes, we have a problem, but we have a solution. Yes. So the solution would start first with a claim if an employee is facing a dismissal and he has some claim to, to raise, even he, he can just log in into the internet, go to the website of the Ministry of Labor, put his credentials and register a claim. Simple as easy. He doesn't have to go physically to the ministry. And that's continuing now, yeah, post-COVID. Yeah, exactly. And then at the ministry, he can make a follow-up. He has a number, a ticket number, and he has a claim number, and he can make a follow-up. So the ministry will, will continue with the process. A second step is there. Uh, a person at the ministry, an officer there, is assigned to this claim. He would review, he would contact the parties, invite them for a first meeting. After that, uh, if discussions are leading to a, a possible settlement, then that's okay. Okay. If I not, understand. they try to mitigate in, into another session. Otherwise, each party will, will, will say what he has, and then the file will be closed and raised to the, the court. Okay. Let's, let's take the first, uh, uh, first option where a settlement is made and the parties are happy. Therefore, a, a minutes are taken and signed by all the parties in the presence of the Ministry of Labor officer. And this uh, minutes is, ready, uh, is having the exe executive form. So down the line in the future, if a default is happening, for any reason, so the employee can have it as a proof and can directly use it yes. as an official document. Okay. This was not before. So that's very beneficial yes, then. Yes, exactly, yeah. which, which is very fast and very uh, active. So now the second option, if we go to court. Also there, the legislator found and created new procedures. We understand first that the file should be transferred from a ministry to another place. So it might take some time. Now, it's not the case. It's very fast and direct uh, transfer. Second, the hearings. Now we start with the legal process. So the hearings are also fast. Uh, within very short period, a hearing can be directly made, assigned. Notification for that period, for, for that hearing, the notifications are now through this new law. It can be by a simple SMS, the SMS registered in the ID of each person. Oh, wow. We know that uh, uh, the civil ID has updated de details of each person in, yeah. in the country. So once you renew your ID, you have your new numbers which is the correct number. So is that the PIN that they've now assigned to? Your phone number. Oh, it's the phone number? Mobile phone number. Okay. Each person has a number and you can be notified directly through SMS to your number. Yes. And once you got this SMS and you read it, it shows red and you are That's legally <laughs> notified. Fantastic. Okay. So this is very yeah, practical and very, very fast. Very much so. This and will help. Is this happening? Uh, it's happening elsewhere now. or in the GCC or uh, is this yes, something a little bit yes, unique no, to... No, uh, I believe uh, it's happening in the GCC in neighboring countries, but it's very efficient in Oman. Absolutely, fantastic. Very efficient. And d do you feel that it's just made everyone's life easier. so much easier? Yes, exactly. That's yeah. why I call it a very progressive law yeah, no, and a very progressive uh, procedures. It made everything fast and easy and efficient. Even, and efficient even for the courts where they can uh, uh, produce more uh, yes, and yes, perform yes, more yeah, absolutely. Uh, of, of their work. Yeah. So we have lots of cases can be resolved in a very short time. This is the 
this is the aim and this is what's happening now. And I'm sure a lot of people at home don't actually realize that things have changed. To this exactly. Extent. So, so um, yeah. it's something I think people um, get very intimidated by the thought of going to court, filing a case. Often they don't do it um, yeah. because they feel it's going to be too complicated, take too long. In the past, you know, sometimes a court case has taken years. Uh, yes. Whereas that's not the case anymore, so that's actually invaluable information. Thank yes. you for that. Uh, in the past, we used to experience a very long period to reach for a verdict. And after receiving a verdict, you would have a second step. Yes. So we have the primary court, we have the appeal court, and then you have the Supreme Court. But now, within the new procedures, we have only primary court and appeal court. We don't have any more to wait for a Supreme Court. Fantastic. And we used to have a very long period for the procedures, litigation procedures, at each stage, like primary court or appeal court. Now, then within the new law, it practically mentioned it should be within a certain small period. Fantastic. Both. So, by example, for example, uh, in the previous uh, period, we used to take more than eight to nine months to reach for a verdict. Nowadays, it can be three months or less. And the appeal, two to three months. So your full procedure will take six months, which was not even the yeah, first the period first during period, the, yeah. the, the previous. That's amazing. Yeah. So you have now a very fast procedure. If I want to take it from the employee side. He used to stay in agony for the one or two years in order to reach for his release or money yes. or rights yeah. or whatever he yes. wants to do. During those two years, imagine the employee doesn't have any resources, any work, no work. anything. And he has a family and he has some personal needs and that he cannot reach to. Now, due to that, that's why I can say the, the legislator found the a very progressive yes, way yes. to solve those issues and solve those problems in a very short period. And we can reach to a solution in two stages of litigation. Actually, it's three because it starts at the Ministry of Labor and then primary and then appeal. So we, have, we are maintaining the three stages. And then you can reach for a right conclusion for your issue, which is very fast. So what steps would an employee in difficulty need to take if they needed to make um, a claim or uh, register a complaint? First, let me clarify one issue. The labor law is not only made for the employee. But it's also made for the employer. Absolutely. Yeah, so. It's, it's both sides. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we always look at it as a legal consultant for both sides. But however, we always uh, take care about the employee because he might be the, the weak or the, the weakest, yes, the weaker side. weakest yes. party. Yes, yes. Uh, but in, in, in a very uh, constructive manner, we should also look for the employer. Um, for both sides, if we want to, if both sides have claims, but let us take now the side of the employee. Okay. So if the employee has a problem and he wants to lodge a claim, now through the new procedures, as I said before, he, he can directly go to the, to the website of the Ministry of Labor. It's well known. You can search yes, for it. Yes. And uh, there is a particular page you go and lodge a claim. Okay. You put your name, credentials, phone number, SMS, OTP, you know all this, uh, email number, and you lodge your claim. You write two, three, four, five words. What is your subject? Okay. Okay. And then you receive back an, an acknowledgement that you, we registered your claim. And that's, that's it. You don't need more. And uh, after a while, two, three, four days, Somebody will call you from the ministry after assigning this case to him and you go and you 
you, you take your, you, you put your deposition. And so they state your create claims. an appointment and then you go to the ministry? Yes. And, okay. You, right. you, state, you, you put your statement, mm -hmm. official statement. They try to understand from you more, to clarify the, so the issue. Can I just ask you before we move on with this, if someone goes to the ministry and gets to the point where they're making an actual claim, is it better for them to have a lawyer present or uh, is it okay if is it something that they can do by themselves? Yes, we, we can we should differentiate here two two cases. Okay. Uh, if the claim is uh, related to dismissal, uh, it could be uh, the, beneficial it could be beneficial lawyer. for the legal researcher at the ministry to invite both parties okay. so he can understand from both parties on the what? spot what is the issue and how yes. to trying to solve it. However, if the claim or the request is not related to dismissal, it's something related to the daily work or to the a daily or, or an incident happened, so the employee can claim, but I believe the, the ministry officer, the legal researcher there should have more clarification. Therefore, the, the employee would be invited for a session to make his statement. And then after assessment from the ministry officer, he would claim for the, okay. for the employer to come or somebody who can represent him. So they can try to understand what is, this, what is the issue. If a solution is there, therefore it's good. Otherwise, it can be escalated to another step. Okay. So that's fantastic. And as you say, it's so quick because if it can be stopped there and a resolution yeah. is found early, you don't have to go through the other steps. Exactly. So it's very efficient. I can say that most or majority of the cases can be solved at the Ministry of Labor. Sometimes it's a, a different conception from the employee and uh, he's, uh, maybe he's thinking something else which is not correct. Yes, I understand. And once the employer will... will uh, will state whatever he has, so practically 50% of the issue will be resolved. And is the process the same for an employer? Yes. Exactly the same? Yes. Okay. Now, employer will not use directly the ministry. Uh, we understand that the employer, I'm speaking about the uh, big size company. Yes. They, they have the HR department. Yeah. And so sometimes the HR department will solve such issues if an uh, employee has a claim. But let us speak about the mid-size or the SMEs or the small-sized companies. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes the, the employer also would go to the ministry to seek for legal advice or to seek for solution for his problem against his employee. We have multiple uh, cases like that and sometimes it was solved at the level of ministry. Okay. So moving on just slightly, um, how can an employee proceed into executing uh, a court verdict and how long does that process take? Well, yeah, it's a very interesting question. Uh, now, uh, in this phase, we have a verdict. It means that the negotiations or discussions at the ministry level didn't go through. Okay. And at the primary court, uh, the verdict was issued or appeal court and now we have a verdict at the final stage. So the employee wants to claim his rights and uh, the employee should register uh, executory form of the verdict okay. and start the procedures of execution right. against the employer right. okay. in order to claim his right. Let's say now it's a case of claiming his end of service benefits which is the majority yeah. which is common and yeah. uh, the majority of the claims so here uh, it's a total new procedures uh, other than the litigation process the litigation process is finished now we start a new procedure which is the execution and the process of execution now uh, here there is a total different judge total different court total different uh, uh, process, okay. the, the claimant will open a file and also we can use the, the, lit, the simplified procedures 
of litigation. So notifications through SMS. Yes. Which is very yes. fast. Yeah. And the procedures at the execution uh, step or stage are also fast because it's from week to week. And there you will find that it's really active. So the judge is always present. The officers at the court are always present. Also through online uh, system. So you enter to the gate and you process your, your requests and they would reply also very fast within 24 or 48 hours, wow. whatever request you have. And uh, then you will reach for a conclusion in a very fast uh, uh, manner. Uh, the process also is accurate to the, to the limit that here in Oman, uh, unlike the other countries, the execution is very, very sharp and very hard. So the employer should directly uh, run, if, if I may say that, to execute the verdict once okay. it is issued. Right. You cannot play with that. Yes. But sometimes we have an objection over that. It's also a procedure where any party can claim for an objection because something happened in the procedure, not in the verdict. Verdict is final. final. But in the procedure, sometimes a party can claim that something was missed or it's not correct. So he can lodge uh, an objection. It will go to primary court and the execution of the verdict will be stopped until resolving this, this okay. claim. Okay, so is, could that be perceived as a delay tactic? It could be, yes, it is a delay. It's a, yes. a delay, okay. And more or less, is there any sort of time frame as to how long that procedure could take? It can take from four to six or eight weeks, okay. two months. But we're not talking no, six not months much. a year? No, not much, no, okay. not much. And then we have also an objection over this objection, so oh, <laughs> uh, which is an appeal. <laughs> right, yes. So once the appeal is there, so you have two, two steps. It's always a two steps uh, so procedure. If, if someone lodges uh, an objection, can the court say, I don't agree with this? Yes. Uh, and that yes. Okay. 90% right. of the cases will okay. be like that. Okay. Right. But it's a way of, as you said, it's a way of postponing or delaying the execution yes, process, which is a legal tool. Most of the lawyers will use it. Uh, and uh, you, you, you can find a delay of four to five months of executing the, the, the verdict. But at the end, you know that you are reaching to your right at a certain point and you can reach to a conclusion of your problem. And the execution is very strict, as I said, and very firm. So the verdict will be applied. And if by any chance you are not applying or executing the verdict, you will face uh, hefty, Please. hefty sanctions. Okay. Uh, the, uh, the judge can order the seizure of your assets, of belongings like cars, bank accounts, or if none of that is there, he You'll can... go to jail? Yes. An order for arrest order will be issued against the person until fulfillment of the judgment. It's a very strong tool made by the legislator in order to give a very firm manner to the judgment so nobody can have an excuse and not to execute or enforce the judgment. Yeah. So that's it. So is that something that is applied um, in other courts globally? Or do you feel that Oman have taken a particularly strong stance uh, in yes, issue. it's not. Uh, it's not like the neighboring countries. Okay. Uh, if we want to make a, like a comparison within the neighboring countries, Oman has a very strict rule over enforcing the judgments, even in the process and procedures, yes. which we said that yes. they are very progressive. Yes. Uh, from other countries, they don't use the arrest orders, for instance. Here we have it 
which is very efficient yes. and very strict, and nobody can, let's say, play around. It's it's wonderful to hear that Oman is leading the way. Yes. Uh, Yes. in these things, yes. you know. It's and this would give more credibility and more confidence for, for all people. As, yes, yes. as we know that uh, we have a high standard uh, legal procedures here in Oman, and not like the neighboring country. And this is, uh, my, in my personal view, I like it very much. Yeah, no, I agree with you, I do. Yeah. So we've spoken quite a lot about the challenges that employees face and what they need to do to resolve their complaints and their situations. I want to move a little bit towards employers and their rights and what they would need to do uh, technically to uh, be able to terminate an employee's agreement. Well, um, yes, this is where the all problems lays. And it all starts from there. Okay. Uh, let us say that the COVID situation created a very huge uh, challenge for everybody. Yes. Let's agree on that. Yes, definitely. <laughs> um, it was very difficult on the employer and was very difficult on the employee. Yes, yeah, there were no winners. Yes, absolutely. Exactly. And no one was to blame. There was no yeah. fault. It's a, an extremely sensitive, difficult yes. situation for both exactly. sides. So, Due to COVID situation, uh, the legislator also created multiple decisions or regulations just to try to find a softer possible yes. manner yes. between yes. the two parties. Yes. Um, certain uh, regulations were issued during this period, if, if you can remember, uh, ministerial decisions or uh, directions um, allowing the employer to relieve certain employees, expats, where they went outside the country and they didn't came back mm -hmm. and couldn't find a way to, came, to come back due to travel bans or due to COVID restrictions to yes, multiple, yes, yes, yes. multiple issues happened there. And employees stayed more than two years outside the country, yet their visa is on the company's uh, schedule or or list. So it was very difficult on the employer. Yeah, of course. He's registering an employee. He doesn't have his labor card and he cannot just uh, terminate him yeah. just like that. So a regulation was there, decision was there just to solve those type of issues. Let's take another example. The employer is bankrupt and doesn't have the means to pay or he cannot foresee a, a future for his activity or his business. And he has a multiple employees he has to feed. Yeah. Just the basic daily needs. Yes. He cannot sustain. So how can we solve this issue? How can we terminate those employees in a very human manner? How can we make them leave outside the country to go home to live with their family again. It was terribly difficult. It was, it was really difficult. Leave. Yes. Yeah. So those type of problems, I, I know that many multiple issues happened more than those two examples. But I believe that the Ministry of Labor and uh, the legislator found multiple and issued multiple decisions during this period, which made both parties in a very, or they tried to find solutions to those problems at that time, which were a little bit relaxing for both parties. Yes, yeah. And the employer find a way to satisfy his financial needs and to terminate in certain positions those employees. And those employees could find a certain solutions for their long-lasting problem, you know, the visas, the, the repatriation to the home country. Yes. So certain employees had fines, some relaxation over fines were made. You know, certain issues and certain solutions were creating during this period to try to solve those issues. Yeah, I, it was such a difficult time for everybody. Yeah. What is the time period to terminate a contract? 
And this is this is the most uh, important question. <laughs> it's the most for asked question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let us say that now we are not into the COVID situation, yes. and the COVID situation is over. So, how can we terminate a, a work agreement? Uh, we should also take two options. The first option is a limited period agreement where we sign an agreement with an employee for a certain period, which is two years, basically. Our ID uh, residence card is made for two years. Therefore, the agreement, labor agreement is for two years. So this is the first period of the employment agreement. This period is limited and Prior to that, if the employer wants to terminate, he should advise the employee. He will tell him before one or three months, uh, according to the ag contract. Uh, he will tell them that, well, your agreement is reaching to a period and we don't want to renew. Okay. It's his right. And this termination is legal and lawful and everybody will, will split up on the due date. However, once the agreement is renewed, and this is critical now, if the agreement is renewed for another two years period or one year period or any other period, therefore the type of agreement now is called unlimited period contract. Okay. Okay. Is that quite new? No, this is the law. This is the labor law. All right. So once you have an extension of the first agreement, it would be a unlimited period and therefore the employer cannot terminate the agreement just like that okay there are some rules we have article 40 which is very famous also uh, it has more than uh, article inside it paragraph inside it stating particular cases where the employer can terminate an employee from work okay. due to negligence, due to criminal act, due to... We have 12, 12 or 14 paragraph oh, gosh, right. okay. detailing each case by case. Right. But mainly criminal charges, uh, assault, such kind of major issues. Yes. Integrity, something like that. So these are cases where the employer can directly terminate an employee. Otherwise, um, we have also a, a clause or article in the law which say that if the employee is away from work more than se seven consecutive days or ten non-consecutive days. So also this clause is very strict whereby the employee should always be on duty. Right. Otherwise, if he's not there, so yeah. the it employer has yes. the right yeah, it's to opening yeah, exactly. himself or herself up for this. So these are tools and articles and conditions set by the law just to try to uh, put a regulation yeah, I understand. between this relationship between the employer and the employee. So in your opinion, um, how easy is it for me, for example, as an employee to find this information? Where would I go to uh, know what those paragraphs are? Because what I find speaking to so many people here that have had issues, whether they're an employer or an employee, um, is a, a misunderstanding of um, exactly what their rights are on both sides and a difficulty in finding out the information. Where can we get that information so that we're okay. all informed? Since now we are living into the internet era. Into the internet age, yes. <laughs> it's very easy to find it. The labor law, uh, the Oman labor law is, is easy. It's not that long. It's also uh, as uh, uh, expression is... Uh, it seems to be very much to the point. Yes, yes. It's, it's very simple. You can find it uh, even at the Ministry of Labor website. And there is an English version and also an Arabic version. Um, you can read it and you can get those points directly. Or you can seek for an advice. All the lawyers would be happy to assist. 
Um, basically, it's uh, simple. Maybe I'm, I'm a legal consultant, so <laughs> legal maybe expert. I would see it. Simple but, for you. <laughs> but for certain people who has a simple knowledge of things, also can, can get the right information from yes. the law. I feel that it's good uh, for transparency. Yes, uh, it's, you know, it's, that it's this very... Information is freely available to Yes, everybody. exactly. Yeah. Information is free, information is available. You can ask, uh, even you can send a question and, and they can reply to you. It's very interesting, it's, it's very, very useful. Yeah, very useful it's, it's very, very active. This is how I see it. So before we finish, um, I want to ask you one more question and it's about NOCs. NOCs. Uh, now, I know I'm blindsiding you a little bit here, but there's such a huge confusion um, about NOCs and non-objection certificates. What's going on? What do we need to know? Has it changed? Uh, yes, the law is issued. You, you don't need NOC anymore. But practically, uh, the decision is taken from the Ministry of Labour part. However, this issue is not related only with the Ministry of Labour, it is related to the uh, civil ID, which is the ROP. Okay. So right. at ROP level, they have their own regulations where we cannot have any, uh, I understand. That, any that, reference on that. That clears up yes. a lot. So basically, the NOC, as far as Labour is concerned, is finished. It's already decided. Um, Yes, but, but we're just waiting for the second step to yes, kick in. Yes, which is at the ROP level, whereby uh, it has its strict rules and yes, regulations yes, and yes. procedures. Yes. Also. So until that time, we will find a, a mutual a process crossover. for that. Yes. yes yeah. So the issue will be solved once and for all. Until now, we don't have such. That's why we have a confusion. Most of the people will try to resign from here and go to the yeah, other I think job. The understanding was that so long as they'd finished their contract um, and fulfilled their obligations, then they uh, would be able to move to a different uh, position in a different company if they wished. Correct. Um, but currently, there's, an NOC is still required. As requested, yes. Um, so uh, back in the time, this type of regulation was made just to uh, maintain a certain uh, uh, level of uh, non-competition. Yes, and consistency. And consistency, yeah. and it was like a security made for the employer. Yes. So the employee will not directly challenge and go to another competitor with all his knowledge and directly compete with the, with the employer. I'm not speaking about the big-sized company, maybe this would affect practically the SMEs and small or medium uh, companies where one employee, foreigner mostly, is handling the majority of the business activity. And he would directly leave this company, destroy and it, the and share the information and directly will go to another competitor and will kill this small company. So do you think that there should be levels of NOC depending on, or well, do you think that would be too complicated? It would be complicated yes. since it's a rule. Yes. It yes. should be general. Okay. And that's why the legislator found a way or a manner to, to solve this yes. issue uh, in a very general form. This is how laws should be. <laughs> Well, Ralph, it has been absolutely wonderful having you Thank on you. the show. It's a I'm pleasure. sure all the viewers have gained so much knowledge and information that they didn't previously have. I know that I have. I'm going away understanding much better uh, the situation here in Oman as it's far as labor law is concerned. Um, it's been a pleasure to have you on. Thank you so much for Thank joining you. us. Thank you for having me. Thank and, you. And uh, hopefully see you again soon. Soon. Inshallah. <laughs> Inshallah. Thank you. Thank you for watching the Big Small Business Show. You're watching TTV and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.